Alps Conference 2022, where we talk about psychedelic awareness. It's great to hear you. I'm Michael, and I'm with... Alekos. Uh, and we'll be talking to Peter... How do we pronounce your last name? Shastet Hughes. St uh, Shastet Hughes. Where, where does it come from? Shastet is from Sweden, where I was born, and Hughes is British. My father's British. Okay. Sorry for the pronunciation. I can say Hughes and Peter. The, okay. the, the rest was hard. That's fine. It's all, it's all fine. So, uh, Peter, you've just done a talk on the metaphysics and psychedelic research. Uh, can you explain who you are and what you are presenting at the conference? Sure. Um, so I'm Peter Shastet Hughes. I'm a doctor of metaphysics. Um, I work at the University of Exeter in Britain. Um, I am... Um, I'm mostly a philosopher of mind, um, so I'm interested in consciousness generally, how mind relates to matter, what mind is in itself. Um, and I, I'm interested in psychedelic experience as part of that, really. So um, when I had a ex psychedelic experience a number of years ago, it, I, uh, it sort of blew my mind, almost literally. And uh, afterwards, I tried to sort of um, understand it in terms of the philosophy that I was um, reading, or but there seemed to be nothing, not much available. You know, there was William James and uh, Gerald Hurd and a few others, but not much. So I, that sort of kick-started a new direction in my career, sort of trying to analyze these experiences in terms of what we know in philosophy of mind, but also in terms of metaphysics, the great Western tradition of wet metaphysics. Well, that's really well explained. And it's true that uh, listening to your talk, which is great, huh, which I, I, I encourage everybody to go and listen to on the YouTube channels of Alps or on, on, on the podcast itself. So how do you differentiate metaphysics and spirituality? Because listening to your talks, it was a bit, in, let's say, in the mood. Or uh, <laughs> So maybe I'm not, I'm not a philosopher, but how do you um, aggregate the two? Right. Um, well, metaphysics, I mean, metaphys you know, all words take on different connotations, but I use metaphysics in a purely academic sense, which stems from, as I said in the talk, um, Aristotle's book, The Metaphysics. And that book um, encompasses a number of questions, mostly relating to the fundamental nature of reality. So, for example, and this is how it's developed since Aristotle, so we ask questions like, you know, um, is the fundamental nature of reality physical? Is it mental? Is it both physical and mental? Or does uh, the physical come out from out of the mental? Does the mental come out of the physical? Or is there something else, a neutral uh, substance out of which both come or both are expressions of? Uh, but we also look at um, questions in metaphysics such as what is causation? What is time? What is space? How are they related? What is a relation? What is a property? Um, and so on and so forth. You know, the, the modal modal questions such as what do we mean by the words probability, possibility, necessity, and so on and so forth. But it's a very, very rigorous logical study in, in the universities now. And um, it doesn't really coincide with what you might call spiritualism, spirituality, um, which is more uh, on the religious side of things, I should say. There is an overlap, certainly. So, some mm -hmm. of, so we have some of the same questions, but I guess the methodology differs. Um, it's not just a matter of faith, I believe this or I believe this because I had an experience of this or that. It's rather trying to um, analyze um, concepts into their core components and see how they relate to each other and uh, see how we can determine their truth or not. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So there's a kind of secular, you could say like metaphysics is, very basically, metaphysics is a secular uh, spirituality. Okay, and, but you used also the word mysticism in mm. your talk. So how does that fit in? Uh, yeah. Where do you put that in? So I made it uh, in in the talk. I made this um, distinction between psychedelic experience, metaphysics, and mysticism. So um, all they're all interrelated. They all overlap, but they they're different. All different. So uh, psychedelic experience can be about you know um, becoming a better fighter or locating a lost object or so on. It doesn't have to be metaphysical or mystical. And this might be culturally determined to a certain extent. Mysticism is related to metaphysics, but it's distinct. So um, we have different criteria of mysticism, like William James had passivity, transiency, noetic quality, and um, passivity. Um, Walter Stace in 1960 came up with um, more criteria, such as blessedness, peacefulness, um, state of tranquility, the unreality of time and space, and so on. Um, they are so there are things that 
overlap, like timelessness. You know, what was the nature of time? This is a metaphysical question. It's also a question in physics as well as metaphysics. Um, but it's also um, a part of the mystical um, tradition, experiencing the timeless, the eternal, as it's known. So the, these terms are, are used interchangeably. There's no absolute definition of either either, either of them. But I think that um, when we, when, if I speak about metaphysics, it sort of um, grounds it a little bit in uh, 3,000 years of thought. Whereas, uh, well, mysticism also has got a, probably even a longer tradition. However, it's, um, mysticism is grounded in experience, whereas mm. metaphysics is grounded in reason. Okay, thanks for the explanation. <laughs> so in, in your talk, you, um, you talk about different metaphysical experiences, such as time distortion, connection with nature. Do you think that the link we could make with uh, psychedelics is that maybe w they allow us to see something we are not able to see in our non-modified conscious state? I think that's yeah, that's the interesting question, isn't it? That um, you know, the question is: Do do psychedelics only um, elicit hallucinations? I mean, they're also called hallucinogens, of course which sort of pushes it that way. Or, yeah, are they veridical? Do they allow for um, um, a, true exp a truer experience of reality? How can you determine that one way or the other? Well, I'd say you need to use metaphysics to determine it. So, for example, with nature connectedness, you know, um, if you are, um, uh, let's say, an emergentist, as I mentioned, or an epiphenomenalist, you think that this feeling you get of nature connectedness is just an epiphenomenon of the brain. And therefore, it's not a real. It's not an intuition of something real, just like a like a like a vision of a tree. You would say that's a veridical experience of something real, but a nature connectedness wouldn't wouldn't be um, real in that sense. Um, if you had a metaphysical point of view of epiphenomenalism or emergentism, that the mind emerges from the brain. Um, however, if you took a, another metaphysical position, let's say of uh, panpsychism, uh, the view that um, all beings have basic, you know forms of sentience, so a tree or parts of nature, plants, fungi, have their own kind of perspective, their own sentience, albeit different from human consciousness. Um, under that perspective, then um, intuiting that would be, it would be, you wouldn't have to dismiss it then as a hallucination. It wouldn't prove, of course, experience wouldn't prove that um, plants have sentience just because you've experienced it as such. But nonetheless, under a panpsychist metaphysical framework, you would have reason to believe or more reason to believe that that um, in that that experience was veridical, so it's it's not proving it's not a matter of proving or disproving. It's a matter of plausibility. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, could you explain a bit uh, in your talk? You explain why you wanted to integrate metaphysics in psychedelic research. Could you explain why mm. and what you are proposing as research? Yeah. So um, my main conjecture, uh, part my. My main part of my talk, really, uh, what I'm working on now, is that um, if you're going to have a psychedelically induced metaphysical experience, it should be integrated with recourse to metaphysics, which is almost true by definition, right? Mm. It's almost a tautology, as we say in philosophy. Um, so at the moment, you know, um, inter the integrative phase in in therapy, at least, is um, after the um, experience itself. You think, how can this experience? How can I integrate this into my life? And of course, psychotherapists, clinicians, psychiatrists, they have um, been trained in methods which have excluded metaphysical experience. So, and then it's not part, part of their professional ambit, um, metaphysics, so they, they couldn't include it anyway. But it just seems odd to me that if you're going to have, and, and it's not, ex not the only experience you can have, but if you do have ex metaphysical experiences, such as timelessness, more dimensions of space, nature connectedness, and so on, um, if you do have these experiences, um, it would make sense to be offered um, a sort of menu of metaphysical options so that you can place it. And and that's not just for understanding what had happened or potentially understanding what had happened to you, but also uh, the conjecture is it will induce longer-term health benefits because um, by seeing, let's say, that you think, yeah, I don't know, like God is nature, for example, pantheism. Um, if you have that and you've never... You've never um, come across Spinoza before, for example, the pantheist, you know, who believes this. Um, you might be more likely to dismiss it, and therefore the psychedelic experience would have less significance in your life if you've dismissed it, because you've never been introduced to these ideas before. 
But if as part of integration, so not replacing integration as we have it now, but as part of psychedelic integration, you have these metaphysical options, this schema of metaphysics available, um, this could potentially help people make more sense and more significance of their experiences. That's a conjecture, of course, and mm -hmm. maybe it's not true. Maybe it won't help at all. But you can actually do experiments to test this. Mm -hmm. And uh, great. And I think you have a framework, defined a framework that people could use in, yeah. in, our, uh, in order to test that, correct? Yeah, that's right. So we, in Exeter, we've created a Exeter metaphysics matrix, we call it. So it's um, um, just really a schema of different uh, metaphysical options. So, you know, um, substance dualism, neutral idealism, um, uh, neutral monism, sorry, different forms of idealism, and so on and so forth, panpsychism, animism, blah, 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 um, monotheism even. And uh, from this matrix, we can create, we have created a questionnaire, um, which can be used, I think, to better analyze people's psychedelic experiences for a start. But also it can be used for, we are hoping for the integrative phase where we will create um, a sort of more intelligible um, handbook or courses and so on um, oh. to understand it. So one last question. We see a lot of uh, people interested in neuro neuroscience, psychiatrists, psychologists, interested in the uh, uh, psychedelic field, and we don't see that many philosophers. <laughs> Am I wrong? And if <laughs> so, why? And do you think there's a way forward for philosophers in that field as well? Yeah, um, there's a number of reasons, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think, well, one, one historical reason is that when psychedelics were very common in the 1960s, um, philosophy was at a very reductivist stage where consciousness mm -hmm. didn't exist. So you didn't get that. You didn't get people latching on then. Um, another reason is that philosophers are very wary of their main tool of trade, their mind. And they, <laughs> if they believe in the propaganda that says that this messes your mind, you know, that's their job gone. Um, another reason is, of course, funding. You know, they are still illegal in most countries, these substances. So if you, you know, it's very hard to maintain a position as a philosopher in academia today. So if you, you're really taking a risk, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you're going to like push psychedelics into it as well. Um, I'm, I'm very lucky to to have funding and so on but I mean it's 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 just a huge risk however having said that more philosophers are getting on board now um, so we just published with Bloomsbury a few months ago uh, philosophy and psychedelics frameworks for exceptional experience with um, Bloomsbury and uh, we've got 15 authors contributing to that um, there are there are a, number, a few other books on, on the way I see and uh, we'll probably do a second volume to our Bloomsbury book as well so um, we're bringing, we've got a big community in um, Exeter, a number of philosophers. We've got a class on philosophy and psychedelics there. So um, it's growing. But yeah, you're right. It, uh, why are there more neuroscientists? I think that there's much more possibility of funding when you talk about therapy. Mm -hmm. the philosophers don't talk about therapy mm. much. I understand. So a number of reasons, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, this discussion. Uh, can you tell me, uh, tell us where we could find more uh, information on yourself or about your work? Uh, wh where is the best place to go? Um, well, my, my website is easy. It's uh, philosopher.eu. Um, and that ha li has links to everything else, really. So I'm on Twitter, Peter Schuster H. Um, I've got Ontologistics YouTube channel. TEDx talk there, consciousness, psychedelics. Um, yeah, just so so all over the place, really. Yeah. Okay, thanks. We'll put that in the show notes huh, so people can scroll down while listening and they can click on all the links. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. It was a great uh, to talk to you. And for all those listening, well, it, we're at the Alps Conference 2022 speaking about psychedelic and research, and you will hear more about us. So thank you very much. Thank I wish you a great day. Thank you very much. Hmm.